I think we shouldn't discount the role of exports. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, that we just think 2022 is going to be different from the last crisis globally in that a private sector balance sheets around the world are very strong. So the opposite is true there. They've got so much fiscal support and so much excess saving that in the US it's two and a half trillion. So our global economists actually are very buoyant about growth in 2022. In fact, in October, to December quarter, global growth was tracking 6% in real terms, the highest you know, ever, uh, barring the lockdown periods. And there was 6% inflation. So you had 12% nominal GDP growth. So once the near-term Omicron, say, hopefully it's short and sharp, is out of the way, we still have you know, strong expectations for uh, advanced economy growth for 2022. So I think we shouldn't completely rule out the role of exports, not just manufacturing, but services. That you know, what, what COVID has done is uh, accelerated the transition to, to IT. India's IT sector is, is very well positioned to, to grab that opportunity. And we're seeing that in the data. If you look at the last three, four quarters, you look at the services, net services, export numbers, and the invisibles, they've been rising sharply. So I still think exports can and will have a role to play in 2022. But they, that will be need to be need to be complicated uh, complemented by fiscal policy. I think the difference from when we spoke last time era was you know we spoke about CIGNX. The constraints were much less. Remember, in August you had strong global growth, but financial conditions were very benign, and global commodity prices were still relatively muted. Now, with financial conditions tightening, the Fed's going to be you know has made a very hawkish pivot. We expect rate hikes to start from March three rate hikes this year, they will let their balance sheet roll off at some point mid-year onwards. And so fiscal and monetary were complements for the last two years in India, helping each other to mitigate the damage. But by year three, you know, with inflation still above 5%, inflation expectations have hardened by about 200 basis points. And the current account, the current account is now moved from the 1% handle to the 2 2.5% handle, right? So in fact, October to December, we see the largest quarterly current account deficit in eight years. Now, I don't think that's going to sustain. I think we'll be back to the 2% handle. But it just means some of the external constraints uh, are, are increasing. The global economy is not as benign for emerging markets as it was six or nine months ago, uh, right? And it, therefore, I think policy will have to be more selective. I think fiscal and policy will gradually have to become substitutes from complements. My own sense is because this is an uneven recovery, fiscal policy is far better positioned to offer targeted support and do the capex. Monetary will therefore gradually have to normalize. But in terms of, say, uh, you know, the space vis-a-vis uh, -vis what is the stated path of, uh, you know, the fiscal deficit reduction, uh, there is, one would assume that the government would follow that path, or you think there is enough rationale to veer away from that, keep the fiscal deficit higher, uh, even, uh, you know, compared to what they projected last year? I, I would not go down that path. I would think that the path itself um, um, that's been laid out is quite a gradual one. Uh, uh, and I think, you know, uh, if you're, I think it's important to print it, uh, to print it, the deficit close to 6.8% this year. We're already seeing, because of what's happening globally, financial conditions in India have tightened. 10 year bonds are up by 15, 20 basis points uh, uh, over the last month. What you don't want is to increase fiscal risk premium. So if the idea is to have a more gradual path, I think the fiscal marksmanship should be good. Uh, and I think it'll be good to uh, hit the you know 6.8 or come very close to that number this year, but then have a half a percent or so consolidation for the next year at least. Okay. That path that was in, envisaged was you know 0 0.5, 0 0.6 percent, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 every uh, consolidation every year. I think this should not be linear. I think in the first couple of years, it should be half a percent. Then when you're sure about the recovery, you can increase the pace of, of consolidation. There'll be a temptation here from analysts to say, tax collections were so strong last year. Let's budget that same buoyancy this year and surprise bond markets and you know push 10-year uh, yields down and over-consolidate. I think that will be too much of a gamble given uncertainty. Part, uh, tax collections truly are impressive. But part of that, I think, is activity moving, as we discussed, from informal to formal. Yeah. Now, next year, uh, hopefully there are no further waves and the informal economy begins to recover, which is needed for job creation. Some of that activity might peel away from the formal sector, move to the informal sector. And that will mean that tax to GDP actually slightly lower next year, which is not a bad thing if it's accompanied by higher job creation.